Hello everyone, Denise here. Today we are going to be making the spiffy cowl. What we will need is some worsted weight for yarn. I have Carrion Simply Soft Tweeds here. It is a five ounce ball. It is 97% uh, acrylic, 3% viscose, and that is the little bits that are inside of the, the yarn here to make it look flecked. It is uh, off-white, this color with the fleck included in it. There's like a brown and a like a tannish color um, going throughout the yarn. And this is approximately 250 yards. Now if you just wanted to use um, one ball of yarn and take it from both ends, you sure can. In my pattern, I said to take two strands of worsted white yarn. Now you can use whatever yarn you want. Um, when I made the pattern, I used Red Heart. So um, I used Buff and Erin uh, with a Red Heart Super Saver to make the first one that I did. And this is what it looks like. And the buttons are optional. And you can sew this together as well so that you don't have to wrap it around and button it every time. You can just slide it over your head. And I will be... Uh, showing you how to do all of that. You can do it with or without fringe. We will also need a N slash P 10 mm hook. This is a clover hook. So you use whatever works for you. Gauge is not crucial on this project. We'll need a pair of scissors and something to weave in your ends. So let's get started. So my original cowl when I created this design um, is about six inches wide here and then it wraps around your neck and you can make that as long as you want. You can also make it as wide as you want um, as well. Like I said, you can have buttons or no buttons. It's completely up to you. Okay, so let's get started. The uh, PDF for this pattern will be on my blog, and I will put a uh, link in the description for you for that. I am going to use the Caron Simply Soft Tweeds, and I have part of a, a skein that I used for a hat and then I'm going to use from um, a new, the new skein that I sh uh, showed you at the beginning of the video so that it's easier for me to uh, work with the yarn. Otherwise, normally um, I would probably go ahead and just take from both ends of, of uh, one ball of the yarn so that it's uh, not using up two of them instead of Instead of the one, I I don't I I wouldn't use a new ball of yarn unless I had to is what I'm saying. So, okay, so let's get started. So we're going to work in rows, and we'll start with row one. We need to chain 61, and this is completely up to you, and uh, it is completely adjustable. First, we're going to do a slip knot. And then it says chain 61. Now, like I was saying, you can do you can do it as long or as short as you would like. So the 61 is what will be wrapped around your neck. So if you want it to be longer and lay further down, further than your collarbone area, go ahead and chain as many as you want. It doesn't matter. Uh, this pattern doesn't matter how many multiples that you chain in. You just chain whatever you want. Um, I did 61 and that is holding the two worsted weight strands together and that uh, made me end up with a length of, uh, I think it was about 30 inches um, around in this first one. So this is what's going to go around your neck here. Uh, this part will go around your neck back here all the way around. This goes... Um, all the way to the V. So this part goes underneath of the V. So when we're chaining 61, we're chaining, um, we'll start here and then we'll go all the way around like that. So you make yours as long as you want. 61 just fits pretty snug around your neck. So it would keep air and, uh, and the winter cold out for you while you're wearing your coat. Okay, so after you chain your 61, you will do a single crochet in each stitch all the way down your chain and this is still counting as your row one so you just do a single crochet in the first chain and down 
and I will meet you up at the end of this row. Okay, we have our single crochets done in row one. Now we are going to chain one, and we're going to turn. And now for row two, it says to loosely slip, loosely slip stitch into each back loop of all your previous rows single crochets. So this is your single crochet. See these V's on the top? Those are our single crochets. So now we're going to loosely slip stitch into each of those, just the back loop. So this is the front loop, the one that is considered facing you right here. And this would be the back loop back here. So I'll show you. We chain one and we turned. Now we're going to go into the back loop. See, this would be the front, this would be the back. Make sure you get both strands of your yarn if you're doing the uh, double stranded worsted weight. And you're going to slip stitch. And you, you want to do it loosely, but not too loosely. You just want to do it so that it's not tight. Slip stitching can get tight and then we'll run into a problem with bunching later. So we don't want to make it tight. We'll do it again. This is the next one. This is the front and this is the back. We're going to go just in the back and slip stitch. Not single crochet, we're just slip stitching in the back loop all the way up. All the way up our row two. And I will meet up with you when we are done with our slip stitch slip stitching. <laughs> okay, I'm at the end of row two. We are going to chain one and we're going to turn. And now we are going to single crochet into each loop that we didn't use on the previous row. So last row we did the back loop only and we left the front loop alone. So now we're going to single crochet into each loop that we didn't use from the last this last row. So we're going to turn our work and find all of these front loops that we had from our previous row because before they were in front, now they're in back. Now we're going to work in them. Now we're going to do a single crochet in each of those. And you will they'll they'll pop out at you. So it's is not going to be difficult to find them because this is what we just worked. This is what we just did with our slip stitches. So, <clears throat> excuse me, if you just slightly turn it, you'll see all of these back here, and those are the ones that we need to go into. So we just need to find those two loops because we're using two strands, and go into those and do a single crochet in each one of those, all the way down this row and I will meet up with you at the other end, and then I will show you what um, we're starting to look like now. Once we get this, this row finished, it's going to start showing to you what the pattern is going to look like, because after this, it's going to repeat. So I'll meet up with you at the end. Okay, I'm at the end of row three. Now we are going to repeat the pattern. You will do row two, and then you will do row three, and then you will do row two, and then you will do row three. So we will be doing row two again, because now we're on a repeat, and now we're going to do our chain one and turn. And remember row two, we are going to loosely sti slip stitch into our back loops. So here we are. Here's our back loop. Once we turn a bit, we'll see a loop back here and a loop here. We're going to go in the two in the back. I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch um, my row four, which is a repeat of row two, and then I'll meet back up with you. Okay, I'm at the end of my row four, which is a repeat of row two. I'm going to chain one, and I am going to start on row five, which is a repeat of row three. So we're going to put a single crochet and that stitch right there, right here, And as long as you're keeping the work turned, you will be able to see that. I'll meet up with you in just a little bit. Okay, so I'm at about six inches now. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop. I am going to 
go on to the next step. So the next step is to um, sort of finish off this edge and I just chain one and then go ahead and work a single crochet wherever your hook will fit in. It doesn't really matter how many stitches you end up with as long as it's not too many and as long as it's not too few. If you have too many you're going to have curling or ruffling. If you have too few you're going to have um, you're going to have like a pinching or a pulling and uh, the fabric won't look nice and it won't lay flat as well. I'm just going to go ahead and put a single crochet in these till I get to the end of the row and then um, after this I'm going to show you how I seamed up the first one I made. Okay, so my ends aren't um, woven in yet but this is how it will lay when you're wearing it and the finished side of course you would want showing if you're going to sew it shut. Now it is completely up to you how you want to wear it. If you do not want to sew it up at all and just maybe stick a couple of buttons on this piece of the fabric that will come up through here, um, that's up to you. If you just want to leave it as it is and tuck it into the collar of your coat, you sure can do that. Um, the way I did my other one was that I put um, I put buttons on this one, except they're not functional because I did a seam along here and I did a seam along here, stitched it shut a bit. And then on the back side of this, I'll show you what I did. I seamed the front part to this back part a bit and then the buttons uh, can be removed. If you can see here, here's the ties to the buttons. So I can untie those and just remove the buttons completely if I wanted a different look for this one. And you can do the same thing. So the sewing up is really easy. I'll show you how to do that. So if you leave a long tail um, when you're finished with your one side, uh, you can use that for the bottom. This other one that we started with, you can use for along this edge. And really all I do is I just take the tail, put it in the needle, and I just start threading through. It's it's not any magical process, and I'm sure that you've done something similar to this before. So the bottom one that we have left off with, you have um, an end here, and you can take it and do the same exact thing. You want to take your fabric from underneath, and you want to line it up to the side and then just slowly weave in here and in there all the way up. I am going to leave mine open and just tuck it in the color of my coat. Um, but I did want to show you how I did the tassels. Okay, so doing the tassels, all I do is I'll take a length of however much that I want to use and fold it over and sort of snip it and then to put the tassel on the end, what I did, I'm going to tuck these ends in so they don't interfere with what we're doing. I take my crochet hook and I will, well, I need a smaller one. So I'm going to take a smaller crochet hook and I just um, sort of went along the edge. Didn't really matter where. I just kind of evenly spaced it on the first one that I made. And I pull this through pull a loop through and then all I do is I put the tail in through that side and then pull it real tight. And if you wanted to use a chunky weight 5 instead of doubling your yarn you sure could do that too. So I hope you enjoyed my tutorial of the spiffy cowl today. This is the original one that I had made. If you did like uh, this tutorial go ahead and hit the like button and then if you want to see further videos of mine Go ahead and hit the subscribe button, should be over here. And then I will put a link to more videos over here on this side. So until next time guys, thank you for watching.